Hey guys, hope you're all having a great day. In this video, I wanted to show you how to make this DIY solar powered water fountain. I made a few mistakes and issues along the way, but I wanted to explain the process of me troubleshooting with this, so that way you hopefully don't make the same. Besides that, it's a pretty straightforward process, so let's get started. To start off, I'm going to put a list in the description of all the different tools and materials that I used, but the first thing I started off was with the solar powered water fountain pump that I got from Amazon. So this plastic tubing came from that pump kit, and what I was trying to do was I was trying to fit this black piece onto that tube, and I was trying to fit the thicker side of that black piece onto the tube. You'll want to have it reversed from what it normally is, and that'll make sense in a little bit. In order to get the tube to stretch out a little more, I used a lighter a couple inches away so that way it would warm up and then be more flexible. The next thing I wanted to do was I took the bottom saucer of the pot that it came with and I actually wanted to make a hole in the center of it to put that black piece into. That's where the water is going to be coming out of and we can use different attachments for the water to shoot out of from the top. So all I did was I used a drill bit here and the best thing to do is just match up the drill bit to the size of that plastic tubing. It took me a couple different tries to get to the right size hole, but just remember, start off small and slowly work your way up so that way you don't make the hole too big. The next part is going to be having the pump situated at the bottom of the pot. It's going to sit at the bottom and the tube is going to connect to it so that way the water can run to the top of that saucer. So at this point, I needed to figure out how much I needed to cut off of that tubing in order for it to fit properly in there. It took me a couple different tries to really figure it out, just trying to set it in there, trying to get the pump on. But what I ended up doing was I realized that the pump doesn't have to sit flush at the bottom, it just needs to sit towards the bottom because the entire bottom of that pot is going to be filled up with water. As long as that pump is fully submerged in water, then the fountain's going to work properly. So don't worry too much about doing this, but get it as close as you can to the bottom, so that way if the water runs low, that you don't have any problems with it running dry, um, but it doesn't need to be perfect. So you can see that the saucer is fitting flush inside of the pot, and that's one of the biggest things when you are looking for different products to purchase. Just make sure that you get a saucer that is a little bit smaller than the outside of the pot. This saucer is going to act as a catch for the water and also to put rocks in to make it more decorative, and so that's why I'm drilling these holes in so that way the water can drain back into the bottom of the pot. The pot that I was using also did have a couple of drainage holes, which obviously is not going to work for a fountain. We want that to be sealed. So I just used some caulk at the bottom. There was only two small holes that I actually needed to fill. So I ended up doing this process over the course of a couple of days. So that way I could let the caulking dry. This step may not be necessary depending on which pot you buy, but I just got one that had drainage holes in it. After a couple days of letting the caulking dry, I wanted to test this pot to make sure that it was watertight. If you do have to do any caulking, then I highly recommend testing it beforehand. I just let the pot sit for about five minutes after filling it up, and after that, I was good. From this point forward, it was a pretty simple setup. All I had to do was put the pump at the bottom, stick the piece through the center of that saucer, and then put that saucer in place. After that, I wanted to test out the solar panel just to see how strong of a pump we actually were working with, and then how the different attachments would fit. I had the solar panel off to the side, but as you can see here when it was in the sun, this is about later afternoon, you can see that it actually was working quite well. Next I filled it up with some rocks that I got from Home Depot, and you just, if you get any bags of rocks, make sure that you wash them off really well because that can leave a lot of residue and that can clog up the pump. Um, you can really add in whatever you want or do anything at this point, just something that's going to allow the water to drain through. From this point on, I had a lot of attachments that came with this kit, so I wanted to try them out. This was the first one, there was a couple that were smaller attachments and some that were more of a shower setting attachment. I was just trying to figure out what was working. However, this was actually one of the main issues that I wanted to talk about with my experience with making a fountain. A lot of these attachments had water spraying out of the pot and what would happen over time is with the water spraying out of the pot, it wouldn't collect back in and the pump would end up running dry. So I ended up actually not using any of these attachments in the end, just because the water would spray out too much. So what I would recommend for you if you wanna make one of these pots is to either get a fountain that isn't as powerful, maybe a five watt fountain or two and a half watt, or the better option would be to find a pot that is much wider so it can collect that water, especially on a windy day. The other troubleshooting that I was trying to come up with was the solar panel that came with this kit didn't have any type of stake or something that I could put in the ground. Um, thankfully, I was putting this near a fence, so we ended up zip tying the solar panel to the fence, um, but this is what it looked like in the end. 
I thought it was actually really cool. Um, I had this attachment on here, but again, I actually wasn't able to use this attachment because there was too much water that ended up spraying out. So I ended up taking the entire attachment off and I just put another piece of tubing onto that black piece. So it was more just like a little bubble of water that was coming up instead of an actual spray. Um, but if I make another one of these, I definitely want to use these attachments and I can just use a wider pot with that. So you can see here that I did end up using this little piece and then I mounted some rocks above it just so that way the water was a little bit more noticeable. Um, but I would definitely recommend looking for a wider pot instead. So that was my experience making this fountain. I hope you guys liked it and I'll see you in the next video.